Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julia McNeil Crafts. So we're continuing with um, National Storytelling Week and looking at, at how stories inspire creativity and spark creativity. One of my all-time favourite books is this one here, Anne of Green Gables. I have honestly read this over and over again since being about the age of 13. I've pulled this one out because it <laughs> proves just how much I have read it over and over again because this one's really feeling, falling apart. So. I love it. I will talk more about it as I make my make. So what I thought I would do today is I'm going to alter a notepad because Anne um, loved writing. Um, she was always it was always her goal to love love writing. And I've got this image um, from Crafting Kimmy, a Van of Green Gables, which I have coloured up with Copics. And I have also gathered a few papers from some of my older paper pads. So I've got this one from Kay and Company, Amy Butler, and this one from Studio K. So what I'm going to do now is just go and chop all my bits of paper ready, and then I will be back to make our little altered book. Oh, okay, so I am back. I have got my, this is the Amy Butler paper. And I'm just going to add a little bit more interest um, to that because it's going to be a notepad um, and Anne of Green Gables was always writing and you know she was a bit of a clever clogs. So I've got this stamp here from Carabelle and it's got you know typing on it and script and you know bits and pieces. So I'm going to use that stamp. It is a stamp you've seen me use a lot. I think it's kind of become a new favourite is great because I actually don't have a huge amount of time to date because as much as I thought I was going to have the whole day to be able to get ahead with my videos a couple of things happened and yeah it didn't happen today so <laughs> once again I'm rushing hey ho wouldn't be me if I wasn't doing things at last minute okay so I've just added a little bit of interest there with a bit of stamping and that was the memento rich cocoa that I have used and I just want to roughly see how yeah so we've got a little bit there that's working quite well now I will glue this down to my notepad and I have to say I am a sort of by eye kind of girl I have tried in the past to measure these things out and I don't know, it always seems to work, <laughs> not work as well for me. Normally I would actually just kind of fold it round, um, but the paper's not quite big enough. Um, actually I still might do that, I'll show you how I do it. Okay, <laughs> I'm just talking to myself. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll put a bit of glue on here. Oh, and we're working today. Excellent. Yes, so National Storytelling Week. In case this is the first video that you've watched of mine, as you may have seen on my channel, it's a bit of a series. National Storytelling Week is an event that happens in the UK. Sorry, I have to fix the glue again. Okay, so I have just glued <laughs> that bit down. Now, I tend to cheat when it comes to doing these things. I wasn't going to do it like this. Um, I was going to patch it, but just to show you how I do it. Lots of people score and do all of that first. Um, and I don't know why, but for me, I can just never seem to get that to work. So what I tend to do is stick the first part there, score it, and then I will put a bit of glue along the edge of this here. As I said, this paper is not quite going to fit. And then I will fold that over and hold that a second till it's adhered. Okay. Got a bit of glue coming out now. got my glue working really well now. <laughs> and then I'm going to score it down the spine again, just like that. As I said, I, I've tried doing it before and I've measured it all properly and I've cut my card out and measured it and done the score lines and all that and then I always find it, it never seems to fit particularly perfectly so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, but yeah, my brain doesn't do measuring and things like that. It was never really my strong point. Um, so that's how I do it like that. <laughs> and I've still got my perfect spine like so. And I've now got glue all over my fingers because the extra glue there. So I've done that. As you can see I've also got a bit of an extra lip because again no matter how many times I try and do this 
and measure it out properly I still also don't tend to cover the paper pad properly so I kind of again give myself a bit extra and then chop off the excess and I just go around like so and as I said for some people that's maybe a bit of a palaver but I, I just I don't know don't find me and measuring just do not get on so that's me kind of got the base of my notepad down and what I will probably do is because we've got a little bit of um, a little bit of a gap there it's not fully covered is I will just get another bit of paper and we'll make a little feature of that decorating this up so um yeah so national storytelling week it is going on around the uk and what it is it's trying to encourage storytelling in many different formats its emphasis is on oral storytelling um, but just storytelling in general and the take that i've done it oh sorry just doing that off camera the take that I've taken is how storytelling sparks creativity and I find that a lot of my makes or um, drawings or various things that I love have been is because my imagination has been sparked by somebody's ability to tell a story and so that's why I wanted to do this collaboration to look at how storytelling um, sparks creativity. I'm maybe just going to put a little bit of washi on there as well because I've got my paper slightly squint. And Anna Green Gables is one of my favourite um, books and stories. I love it. Um, and also I thought it was a really good example because although she's a fictional character, um, one of the main things that she loved to do was to tell stories. Um, and so the character herself loved storytelling so I thought that was you know perfect for for this particular make so that's the back of the the book just kind of made a little bit of a of a feature of that and now I'm going to put her on the front so I'm not going to be doing a huge amount that's overly overly fancy with this um, I just as I said I thought a little notepad because she was constantly writing um, that that kind of suited the theme pretty pretty well so um, yeah so she was constantly and half the trouble that she got in you know it's like she was and I, I have used I'm just going to show you this I have used a dauber here that I have previously used on an oxide so I was saying before that I do tend to mix my colours but I do try and keep daubers um, between the normal distress inks and distress oxides separate and that's why you can see that I've contaminated that quite a bit so I'm just going to try and take that out of it. I'm going to have to clean that and I'm going to get the, the dauber that I should be using. I'm going to pick that up from the wrong side because I'm not concentrating. But yeah, you will find the chalkiness. Chalk affects the movement of a product. So quite often if you are trying to... Um, you know sometimes if you've got watercolours and stuff like that and, and they're just not moving the same um, it's because of the chalk content in the card now this particular card because I've used Copics um, it's it's not designed <laughs> to take to take watercolours the same so I'm kind of struggling anyway but now because of that contamination I've kind of now added chalk into that which stops the movement <laughs> so that's why it's maybe best to keep your daubers a bit separate. Normally what I would do uh, with something like this is I would maybe grab my glycerin. Glycerin tends to keep the watercolour, the, the watercolour, um, it keeps it open longer so if you are struggling with your blending it do, that does tend to help. Um, but I'm, I'm just about managing so I'll, I'll leave it like that because yeah, I'm just trying to create a little bit of a of an inked, inked edge there. Okay, so and I'm going to frame it. I always think everything looks better framed. So I'm going to do that. Um, 
with my Pro Marker. Yeah, so I love, I have read all of those books over and over and over again. Like literally, when I was a teenager, I would read all books and then once I'd finished the last one, I'd start right back over again. Um, and I've read it so many times. And I've watched the Megan Follows and Jonathan Crombie adaptation of that a gazillion times as well. That's also probably something that I could quote <laughs> word for word. Um, as I said, I did spend my teenage years housebound, so that is why, <laughs> that is why I have watched some of these things quite so many times. Um, so that's it now. I also pulled that stamp out. I think just to make this, I can give it a little bit of extra details. Yeah, and so some of the stories, like obviously she 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 lived in an imaginary world herself, you know, from stories that, that she told. Um, they all got into trouble when they acted out the Lady in Shalot, which, which again was, was a story um, that, well, a poem, Tennyson, the Lady of Shalot. So, yeah, storytelling was quite important to to Anne, um, so I thought it was a good, a good, um, a good character to have for this collaboration. Plus, I just absolutely love it myself. Right, so I'm just trying to add a little bit more interest, so it's not completely plain. Um, so I'll do that. So that's me doing my do 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 again, isn't it? So what's your favourite story? What inspires you? Do let me know in the comments because I'd be very interested to know. And I'm hoping you're finding this series interesting. That you find it, you know, that it's maybe made you think about storytelling. That's made me think. I was watching a programme on the TV the other day about um, sleep patterns and uh, basically how screens are affecting our sleep um, and how it affects the the blue light from the screens affects the melatonin level in your bodies um, so that you can create unhealthy sleep patterns and obviously um, it affects children and, and teenagers quite a lot because of the digital age that we are living in and one of the recommendations that they were giving to, to this teenager was you know to turn off her gadget um, I think it was about an hour before, before bed and to have a hot bath and it was like to listen to read a book or to listen to relaxing music and years ago that's what we did I always curled up in bed with a book and nowadays it's you know it can be the iPad and I'm guilty of it I've got a little girl who likes her iPad and you know I read I have read on my iPad because I can you know get lots of free books <laughs> that way um, but just so maybe we have lost that ability, you know, to sit and curl up with a, with a good book sometimes. And I know because my daughter's a bit younger and she's not fully learned to read yet. I'm kind of hoping that once she can read a bit better that books will be, be, become a bit more of a feature. But, you know, we've read the odd... We do read our books at night, that sounds terrible. Like I do read our story every night. Um, but it would be nice for books to have a a bigger place in her life than they currently do and just kind of um, doing this has reminded me of all my childhood favourite books and you know obviously I have been reading some books um, you know for doing the collab I've been trying to get get prepared and I was going to put that on because it had a script on it but I don't know if it maybe just I think I'll stick with the um, sorry changing my mind I think I'll stick with these hearts um, yeah so I've been reading some books, but like, you know, when I was that age, my mum would uh, read, read his books. She read The Borrowers to us a lot. Maybe I should do, maybe I should do one on The Borrowers. I don't know, I don't quite know what I would do for that. Um, you know, and we would read a chapter of a night, a night, so it wasn't just like, because I read my daughter books, but it's kind of, they're, they're designed for her age group, um, so it's not necessarily a novel as such, but my mum would read us like a chapter every night of a novel. Sorry, I'm just going to take myself off camera while I find the end Sorry of about that. that. Okay, so <laughs> I've just stuck the washi tape down now. And then I've got this little sentiment that actually came with the stamp set. And it's like, true friends are always together in spirit. Which is obviously one of 
Anne's famous famous coat so I'm just going to stick that onto here so yeah I think what I was trying to say before was doing this collaboration and thinking about stories it has you know it's made me think about the times with my nan when she made up stories and how precious they were it's made me think about you know my mum reading stories to us at bedtime it's made me think about the books that I love and adore and it maybe just helped me to realise just how important uh, storytelling is um, and so I want to make sure that I carry that forward. It's interesting at one point in time um, I actually I think probably influenced by Anne of Green Gables and Jo from Little Women um, you know I did go through stages where I wanted to be a writer <laughs> as you will learn in another week. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. save that cliffhanger for another day um, and I did actually take a creative writing course at one point um, not that I'm suddenly going to change direction um, I prefer, much prefer the this side of my creativity to the um, to the writing um, there's obviously an element of my nan in me somewhere um, but maybe I can tell my story through through art um, and yeah, because as we've said, storytelling sparks creativity. So that is my make, that is my little notepad, um, Anne of Green Gables inspired, so that I can write my story in it, or um, somebody can write their story in it. Um, I really would encourage you to check out the um, other girls and their makes. Um, please do go and show them your support there's some lovely things that have been made and the lovely dawn from shining silver treasure treasure she has a giveaway going on her channel as well so please check that out and if you have enjoyed these videos and you are enjoying what i'm doing please do consider liking and subscribing and hitting that bell button so you know the next time that i upload and um, take care and i will see you again very soon okay then bye